In the early 1960s, America's military might is directed toward fighting the Cold War. Lieutenant Colonel Philip Corso wants to bring alien technology from Roswell into the fray. By the end of the summer of 1961, he maintains that he begins to contact military weapons labs about his alien artifacts. Now, the Army laboratories also had civilian scientists there, and they developed this relationship of handling classified material. Phil Corso felt very comfortable working through the Ar Army laboratories to the civilian scientists because the clearances were all taken care of by the laboratory. America is dotted with top secret high-tech labs where civilian scientists work on sensitive military projects. Los Alamos, home of the Manhattan Project, is perhaps the most famous. But in 1961, Fort Belvoir in Virginia is quietly working on a decade-long project to develop night vision engineering. Corso claims he makes this lab the first he approaches with alien technology. In order to get these things reverse engineered properly, you couldn't just take this to a radio shack. I mean, you, it, it had to go to a place where somebody would understand the technology. According to Corso, Roswell eyewitnesses report that the alien craft has image intensifying technology. If one went inside the ship and looked out, the world outside would look as bright as day, even at night. There is also, according to Corso, a lens taken out of an alien's eye that has light enhancing properties. No one knows how the two are related, says Corso, but he knows their potential value. Corso maintains that by the late summer of 1961, he helps researchers at Fort Belvoir by showing them the alien light-enhancing lens and possibly other light-enhancing technology from the Roswell craft. Corso says he wasn't able to further develop the alien mind control interface. His theory was that it would only function with an alien brain. But this momentary setback, he claims, didn't forestall development of another Roswell artifact, an imprinted circuit of mysterious design. We also had a little charred ship, small thing, maybe uh, three-eighths of an inch square, two threads coming out, and a little one in the center with thin wires. These came from Roswell. We didn't know exactly the function of these integrated circuits, but we suspected that these were circuits, electrical circuits. Corso asserts that he brings the object to Bell Labs, which had developed the transistor 14 years earlier. He says scientists there were able to analyze and later recreate the alien microchip. Corso claims the Roswell microchip was supposedly damaged from the crash, but that in his possession is another alien object, this one apparently fully functioning. He knows from reports that when people were shining this thing around, it caused burning on the surfaces that it was aimed at. Corso says he reads classified military reports speculating that the artifact from Roswell, apparently capable of burning holes in walls, is some kind of cutting tool, perhaps used for surgery. At Hughes Aircraft from the late 1950s into the early 1960s, researchers have been working on what would become the first laser tracking and targeting devices for military aircraft. But engineers have run into a snag in their efforts to create a practical device. That is, Corso asserts, until he shows them the alien cutting tool. It did accelerate after 1960, 61, because people figured out new ways to make lasers. And as the science advanced, the engineering advanced. Corso's filing cabinet reportedly contains another treasure from the Roswell Trove. It was glass tubes. And they emitted different color lights. And those were sent to uh, Bell Laboratories. From that, 
was one of the greatest advancements I think we have today came out in fiber optics. Many UFO researchers theorize that the spacecraft had no wiring because it was fitted instead with fiber optic cable. Transmitting information with light happens to be an old technology. It dates back to one of the pioneers of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell, who experimented with a device he called the photophone in 1880. Most people have never heard of it, but back uh, in uh, his day, uh, serious scientists thought that the photophone was a more impressive invention than the telephone. The photophone was a way that you could uh, transmit a voice signal over a beam of light. Corso's research tells him that data transmission via light had failed because scientists could not direct a beam of light around corners. But Corso contends that the Roswell artifacts might hold the answer. They were looking at this glass fibers and say, wow, the light actually turns a corner. How can light go in curves? And then they concluded the reason for that was because it had a cladding wrap on it. The cladding was the key discovery you had to make in order to make fiber optics work. Although it would not be until the 1970s that fiber optics were in general use, UFO researchers believed that the cladding wrap on the alien artifact an outer covering on the fiber that guided the light made it possible for earthly fiber optics to advance. Corso also says he examined some curious super strong fibers that his military reports claim come from the aliens' flight suits. The first thing of the fabric that amazed me was a thread that I couldn't cut with a razor blade. Just a thread. In his book, Corso offers a theory about the fibers composing the alien flight suits. The alien bodies, probably the more vulnerable aspects, were protected from what had to be incredible energies by the super tenacity of the fabric, which somehow formed a shield. And Corso said they didn't put these on. They were woven around them. In other words, they spun them like a cocoon. According to Corso, he wonders if these super strong fibers could be developed into super strong bulletproof shields for law enforcement and military use. Corso said that the Army tried to bring it to the University of Colorado to try and fabricate this technology. The mid-1960s saw great advances in super strong fabrics that used polymer technology the type of molecules that Corso claimed were present in his alien fabric. In 1965, Kevlar was invented, a fabric that would be used in bulletproof vests. More proof, according to Corso, of the impact of alien technology. There's no denying that the period Corso works in the Pentagon coincides with a period of rapid technological growth in the United States. 